For your IRL content you were speaking about the other day, do you think it'd be more important to work on de-radicalizing the left as opposed to debating right-wingers? At the end of the day, you might bring in more modern, moderate Democrat voters as opposed to maybe bringing in over a few from the right. We have a think approach debating nowadays. I think it'll be really important in the 2024 election. Um, yeah, maybe. I've thought about this. I need to... Um, I have to think about it more. It, it feels easier to reach right-leaning people right now than to reach far-left people. Like, if somebody were, were to tell me that, like, you're, we're going to kill you if you... You have to de-radicalize the most amount of people possible. And you can choose either, like, 100 far-left people or, like, 100 conservatives. Um, I don't know who would be easier to reach there. I feel like... <clears throat> In, 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 I feel like I can reach people on the right better because I think that people on the left have like a, they feel like they have like a divine right from God to act in the way that they do, um, which is ironic given people on the right that actually believe in God feel like they have a little bit less <laughs> of a divine calling. Um, I, I, but I don't know. Maybe, I'm not sure. I would, have to th I would have to think about that. That'd be interesting. Um, I, I think that... The issue is that like if you're on the far left right now, you have so much reinforcement from like all of the pillars of society that why the fuck would you ever let anybody think you're wrong about anything? Like if you believe a certain thing, you're getting reinforcement in a way academically, um, from like film, um, the like cultural zeitgeist, I guess, in terms of like corporate policy, what everybody's like tweeting, what everybody's telling you politically, like it just, it feels like there are so many different ways that your beliefs on the left get reinforced that if some asshole like me shows up, why the fuck would you listen to me when you have like a divine calling from God to like be however you want to be as long as you like kind of fit that left, um, is it orthodoxy? Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah. <sighs> but then again, I mean, like, maybe fundamentally, maybe we match up on morals anyway. Um, so maybe it would be easier. It's hard to say. Obama. It's hard to say because I can't. Um, I have to be careful not to mix up the fans with the talent, with the with the with the creators, um, because. It might be that, like, the average left-leaning, like, follower is not as disingenuous and insane as the average left-leaning content creator, you know? A big portion of the left aren't concerned with morals, but are more concerned with fitting into a group, and you're not in their group. Oh, I mean, like, we say things like that, and that's kind of true, but it's not like everybody on the right is, like, a paragon of, like, moral... Like, uh, like moral foundation, you know, like, oh, well, on the right, everybody is, you know, we all ha have this blah, blah, blah. We're about, like, no, I don't think that's true of, of, of people on the right. I, I don't think that's true. You think most far lefties identify as far lefties are virtue signal? I don't know, but I do know that if you are far, if you're like a socialist or a communist, unironically, um, like you have the same processing power mentally, you're, you're running on as many cores as a fascist is. Um, People get mad because they'll say, like, well, socialists or communists aren't as bad as fascists, which is probably true, um, at least in terms of, like, political positions. But in terms of, like, critical thought and everything, like, if you are unironically like a socialist or communist, you're, you're, you're on par intellectually in terms of how hard you're working um, with any of the crazy... Yeah, don't do that. Don't be, don't be a communist, guys. Any examples of far-left ideas reinforced on the pillars of society? Well, I think academically, you have an unimaginable amount of support. Um, I think that through, like, media, I, I mean, it seems like most media in terms of, like, film, TV is, it has moved already, not is moving, has already moved, like, pretty far. Um, and then in terms of, like, reinforcement across social media, like, the values of most social media companies, and, and then, like, corporate culture, too, is all, like, pretty far in that direction as well. You think with your empathetic approach, if interacting with lefties IRL, they won't grant you the same empathy, and you might find yourself in the same situation as that professor at like Portland State who is basically debating 10 non-coherent lefties and just getting shouted down. I'm not sure. I really wish I had the ability to. 
Um, it's hard because online they won't engage with anybody because they don't feel the need to. Um, big iron is y equals 16. No. Big, um, I mean, big conservatives won't either, but. Didn't you say a group of high schools are pretty Zoomer woke and you were able to give your ideas to them, right? Yeah, they seemed really receptive. But I don't know how much of like the norm that audience was like that was like a highly driven group of kids that were there specifically to have their political ideals challenged. Right? Like they all came off as like these are like the honor student kids of you know whatever school or thing they went to. Um, no, no, that's not that's not bad. It was good. I thought it was good. Um, what about Christian Eamon Jiggles? Is there somebody on the right who feels a divine calling to spread their political beliefs? Yeah, I don't know. I just don't, I don't get the feeling as much, but I also don't interact in those groups as much either. So like, it could be that I, I just don't have as much of the, um, Obama. the interaction with them. I'm not sure. What do you think started the massive wave of comments on social shit. online? Um, <clears throat> I think I actually have kind of an idea. I bet this is true historically. Um, I bet it's true historically. So I think of, I think something that we need, this is kind of sad, but um, I think something we need as humans is, is somebody to fight against. I think it's really important because when you have somebody that you are fighting against it gets everybody on the same page everybody's super motivated everybody has like one focus everybody's just ultra pipe like ultra pumped up ultra hyped up to go and do like a particular thing so like having trump as this like demonic figure for people on the left to fight against was really positive for the left but i think um something that happens is when you have this figure to fight against, when that figure disappears, shit gets real weird. Because once that figure is gone, all of that hatred, all of that energy has no outlet and no direction, and things immediately fall into disarray. Yeah, I was gonna say, I guess if you, this is kind of one of the big points of 1984, I guess, right, is that part of the reason why you're always at war is because an external threat is a good unifying thing for the people, but, Um, yeah, I think that ha having Trump in existence was probably really good for liberals in general. But as soon as Trump disappears, now you have like a whole bunch of like misdirected, unguided energy of people, and then they just turn on themselves. I think an example of this way I look online is when I used to, um, I used to, I remember when I used to intersect with a lot of the kind of like crazy debate right communities. We were Steiny. Um, like the, Cheers from Aaron Bags editor. Thanks, bud. Like the um, like the blood sports stuff. I remember as soon as I left that, they basically completely, they completely fell into disarray. And I wonder if it's because, like having me as like a focal point to fight against, is um was nice. And then once I was gone, they just started all killing themselves, and it like fell apart completely. I don't know. The scary thing is that if you know, oh wait, what was it? I don't think the rabid response to conservatives is something unusual though, given how completely unhinged Republican positions are. The pushback in America is still tame compared to other countries. So I would agree with you. Um, I would agree with you that that was true like six years ago. Um, I would agree that back then, like the progressive positions were like clearly better. Like. Um, you have the exact time and place. The, that Noah post is one that I referenced a few times. The idea of like, you know, what did the coast, what did the coastal elite stand for? Um, you know, and the coastal elite was like a liberal whose radical positions were like, I'm not mining this, under, this is cancer. Um, was like gay rights and like, um, you know, like some sort of like racial equity. Like the most extreme position you could find of, of like the general like coastal liberal elite would be like maybe reparations, you know? Like that, like that would be the most extreme position they would have. But nowadays, um, the progressive opinion on the left is, is just as incoherent as 
the crazy conservatives on the right. Um, I still think the democratic establishment, like the party, I think, still stands for beliefs that I think are far more grounded in reality than the, um, than the Republican establishment. Like it's not even close, in my opinion. Um, but the, it always feels like the extremes are kind of pulling the reins on both sides a bit, at least culturally. Can you have a leader on the left side the majority follows no matter what? Um, I don't know if that exists on the left. Um, not in the same way that Trump does for the right. Nick Fuentes what Destiny thinks about corruption. That's what I think. Pretty underscore fly underscore white underscore guy sent $3.58. Hey friend, you need to get the bottom of what Destiny thinks about corruption. Last time you talked it was as if you didn't know the basics like the Iron Triangle or military industrial complex. He doesn't. Yeah, we got to the bottom of it. He doesn't believe in corruption. Okay. Here's, here's the issue. It's not that I don't believe in corruption. I understand that corruption exists. The problem is that it makes you... I had a, I thought about this so much when I was like 16, 17. I, I, I got some very rare teenage insight that has remained very true for the rest of my life. There's something that I figured out very early on um, in terms of trying to figure out like how to live as a as an atheist okay because when you become like a religious there's like weird shit that happens because you you have like no grounding like metaphysically you don't understand like what is the world or anything Eth ethically you have no ground like so you have to kind of like think a lot okay well wh you know what's like what do i think is good what do i think is bad like how do i figure this out now if i'm not going to be religious it's kind of a weird thing to to, to ponder um and one thing that i kind of figured out like very early on was that if i want to be free of influence from something the, the, the kind of the gut instinct is, I don't want this thing to influence me, therefore, I'm gonna do the exact opposite of that thing. And something I realized pretty early on was like, well, hold on, if I do that, I'm being yanked around by the chain just as much as if I was still directly influenced by that thing. Um, it's just like the opposite, right? Like f, like f of x versus like f to the negative one of x, what was the inverse function? I don't remember. But like, you're still like, you're still basically held captive the exact same way as you would be otherwise. Um, so something I realized is that like, if you wanna be like truly independent, or if you wanna have truly independent thought, it's not enough to just do the opposite of whatever the thing you don't like is. You have to like explore a grounded position, and then you have to build out from there, and, and don't let the, the primary thing control you. Sorry, okay. So bring this back to our current conversation. If you are, if you really think that there are problems with certain types of cool like, story, uh, nobody uh, asked. Establishment Obama. media, true. If you really think that there are like certain problems with like certain types of establishment media, then the goal is to like have like well-founded positions that allow you to critique the establishment media. But people don't do that. They become uncritically supportive of every single alternative media, and then they become uncritically believing in every single conspiracy theory related to media. Um, and then you end up becoming just as dumb as the establishment people you're critiquing. Uh, I think that the industrial military complex is not real. I don't believe it. Um, I believe that there are private companies that like make money uh, related to war type shit because they're private military contractors, obviously. But like, there there are two huge beliefs that are massively in contradiction to people that believe in the industrial military complex. Um, and, and here at the two, I would ask you to reconcile this, but you won't. And if you believe in it, you're not gonna listen to it anyway, whatever. But like, so here's the thing. The people that believe in the, uh, the people that believe in the military industrial complex believe two things. One, they think that the biggest incentive for us to do war is like profiteering kind of. And two, they think that, um, they think that money drives a lot of politics. These are two things that they believe. But the problem is that these two things are massively in contradiction because the military industrial complex economically is, is so small compared to the rest of the economy that gets absolutely fucked when we do like war related shit that it doesn't really make sense that that's gonna be like your big drivers of your like political thought, right? Um, 
If you look, for instance, at how the world economy is being impacted right now because of stuff like Ukraine and Russia and food shortages and everything, like it would, it would make more sense that like Zuckerberg would be hiring assassins to kill people at Boeing and Raytheon to keep them from fucking with the economy than it would that like the military industrial complex is magically like has is controlling behind the scenes the hands of all the American war efforts and everything um, because like a couple of a couple of companies. Who's, who's like overall valuations aren't even that big compared to other sectors of the economy that these guys are somehow driving all U.S. foreign policy. Um, I, I, I don't believe that. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I think that, and I've moved like more and more and more in, in this direction. And I, and I, I just, I've, I just, I've never been presented with a single reason I've never been presented a single reason to believe otherwise since I've started adopting this position. Nobody has emailed me anything convincingly, no researcher, no individual, no whatever. Sometimes I'll get an email where people will be like, oh, you're wrong on this, but they didn't, don't really send me anything convincingly. Um, I think that more and more, the, the, the US foreign policy like, just tracks pretty closely onto like, people's opinions. Um, and that's where a lot of it comes from. Uh, are there people that like do unethical things during wartime and make some money? Yeah, but I don't think that it, it's not like like if I look at the United States post 9-11 It's not like we were all like, okay guys, hold on. Let's give peace a chance Let's be smart about this and th it was more like like throw a dart on the map and we're gonna go and destroy whatever fucking country You take us to God Emperor George W. Bush like it feels more like the like our policies in the United States do track and follow public opinion pretty uh, pretty closely, but I think it's more attractive to just hear. It just feels so nice, so much nicer to, to hear about like conspiracies everywhere because then like you don't the, the public doesn't have the responsibility of like how fucked the U.S. is sometimes in terms of what we do. I don't know. I think people think of Dick Cheney and um, Carlisle group stories when it comes to war and corruption. I mean, like I'm sure there is corruption. Sure, like I'm not going to say that there's no corruption. Um, I'm sure that there is corruption, and I'm sure that people do try to act like bad actors, but I think that people give way too much power to some of these companies sometimes, pretending that they direct everything, um, rather than like, this is where the current political opinion is of the, the US public, and it's why things are moving in the directions that they do. Here is a reason. If money in politics doesn't matter that much, then you would have no problem just banning it or making it illegal. Wh how do you... What do you what does that mean? Ban money in politics? I, I I don't know what that means. Are you never allowed to advertise for any political cause anymore? Are you ever? Are you do you not run ads anymore? As I don't I don't know. I don't know what that means. Also, that'd be like a, probably a massive First Amendment violation. But oh, this guy, top ten most watched YouTube politics videos of the day. This would be super easy to thread to go over, but. Um, what else is he saying? And I was just blown away by that because we were talking about. Oh, and then also, it's also super disappointing because these same people that are so critical of like the military industrial complex, so critical of the government and social media. Oh, yeah, I already said this. They just, they will, un they'll, they'll turn around and then take the next breath. Like, yeah, I think Joe Rogan, well, they won't say this, but like, they, they they'll, like, literally believe that like Joe Rogan is like one of the most informed people in the United States. I think Jordan Peterson should be president. I don't think Alex Jones actually lies that much. I think Project Veritas does really good work. Uh, I like all of these alternative medias, I think, are honest. Like, all of them say, really, bro? Are you serious? Like, <clears throat> about this. And I said, like, to what extent do you think there's corruption? He said, well, I basically don't think there's a lot. He said, really? What about. What about pay for play? What about the Iron Triangle, the revolving door? And I'm giving them examples too. They're not just buzzwords. I'm talking. I, I feel like the I feel like the pay for play people. Um, if this is specifically referring to um, money and politics and not a different type of thing, but like I, I feel like you got shit on. I feel like you got shit on really hard if you were one of those people that believed money was like your big main driver in politics when Steyer and Bloomberg got blown the fuck out. And these guys were billionaires. Bloomberg spent an ungodly amount on advertising. Um, they were both billionaires, and they got they were non mentions in in the in the primaries um, after like they had their time in the sun, right? Um, as soon as Bloomberg opened his mouth, he was done on the campaign trail. And these guys spent so much money; they were billionaires. Um, so what what happened? You know? Um, yeah, I don't know. I just it doesn't it doesn't feel like money. I feel like if you have people that already agree with the thing, money could be a good like conduit to continue to evangelize or get people on your side but i don't think it's i don't think it is the like you know just spend a lot of money and win elections look at nina turner has learned this twice now um 
Nina Turner has learned this twice now to where she will dramatically outspend her opponent and get fucking destroyed. Um, yeah, I don't know. Also, I think you have to be careful of the statistical inference that like people that raise the most money are winning elections because they're spending the most money. Well, it might be that they're raising the most money because they're popular, right? Like two people that raised the most money over the last few election cycles were um, Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders, right? Because Bernie Sanders like was, was recently popular in the Democratic Party. He had a lot of energy in his base, you know? Um, Obama. Talking about the relationship between uh, the the regulatory agency, the think tank, the lobbyist, talking about regulatory capture, which has been around forever. The military industrial complex, and he's just the permanent bureaucratic class, the so-called deep state, and he's just sort of hand-waving that away, like, oh, that's all just working as intended. Well, we need experts. It's like there. I mean, there is going to be like some type of like regulatory capture, sure, but I mean, like that's like part and parcel of any system of any regulatory anything ever. That's always going to be the case, right? Like it, like. Um, that was kind of an excuse me argument that like, well, to get rid of regulatory capture, what you truly need to do is get rid of regulations. Like, it's really the only way to do it, you know? Like, what the f Dude, how could you be that foolish? So, I love him, he's my brother. He's my brother and I love him, but, uh, yeah, he, I, I don't know. I also feel more, um, I feel more emboldened in my position, too, when if somebody, like, if somebody goes to summarize my position and they give such a horrendously strong version, it also makes me wonder if they think, if they know I'm right. Um, like, I've never said there's no corruption. That would be a silly position to have. There's always going to be corruption. There are examples of corruption. Yeah, like, like, arguably a lot of the early Iraq war with the Office of Special Plans was a little bit corrupt. Um, arguably Iran-Contra was a little bit corrupt. Um, like there, there are going to be examples of, of like, of course there's corruption. Like I'm not going to sit here and say there's not. I just don't like it when people pretend that like, oh, there's corruption in the mainstream, but then they unquestionably support every anti-establishment thing that they can find. And it's like, okay, well, it doesn't seem like you're using your brain either, my dude. You've just picked your own dummy to back, you know? Um. <clears throat> there, there's a serious lapse there where he just... I think he just doesn't understand the extent of the corruption. I don't know what that is, but it's so out there. G Figu sent three dollars. Niggas be scared to moan during. But I mean, this is also a guy that thinks that thirty to fifty percent of the problems in our society would go away if we got rid of all the Jewish peoples. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. But I be and my girls, you're sounding like a minion. <clears throat> okay, thank you for that. That's what I think. Pretty good. Oh. Remember, you guys hear a lot of weird things about how the United States is not progressive and how we're evil and horrible and blah, 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 okay? Careful. That shit doesn't fly outside of the United States, okay? There's a lot of places in the world still, believe it or not, that will fucking execute you <laughs> for having fucking marijuana. Not execute you, but it's like some serious shit, okay? See all of Asia, okay, including Russia. See some European countries still. Um, maybe most European countries, actually? Uh, yeah, just careful with that, like, whole, like, America's a Nazi, racist, horrible country that's, like, behind Europe on every issue. That is not true in almost any regard, especially on fucking social issues. Now, if you want to talk about, like, our economic shit and the fact that we don't get, like, paid maternity leave or whatever, that's fair. But, um... <clears throat> they do have death penalty for drugs? Do they? In South Korea, they might. I don't remember. I just remember when I saw that shit years ago, like, holy fuck. You think of Russia as being in Asia? Um, not really, but it's kind of complicated. Um, <clears throat> like Russia's like history and like Russia geopolitically um, very much identifies as like, is it considered Eurasia? When you talk about places like Kazakhstan and like Georgia and stuff like that, like they're not like Europe. Um, but they don't think of it as like, you don't think of it as like Asian, but I'm pretty sure over in that part of the world, it's like, is it Eurasian? Or like that, there's like a different kind of term for it. Um, but you, you wouldn't just say they're like only European, right? It, it, unless maybe you're exclusively talking about like Moscow. Central Asia maybe? Okay, sure. I think when people say Europe is ahead on social issues, they're talking about primarily Germany, UK, and Sweden, which are undoubtedly ahead of USA in terms of that. I don't think that's necessarily true, but... Central Asia does not include places like Georgia, Armenia, or Azerbaijan. It's Eurasia. Okay. <laughs> oh no. She liked the way that I rock. She liked the way that I woo. She liked the way that I woo walk. She throw a bat for a nigga. No! Do you guys. Okay, he's Hispanic. It's okay. 
He, no. he looks more Hispanic now, too. So as long as he's got the mustache, he can, with the soft A, he gets like one per day. Okay. Uh, that she throws it back for a nega. <sighs> okay. That he, this just, just crossed the threshold into midnight. So that was, now he's used both of them for both days. Good evening. You got a great show for you tonight. Big story. Big show for you. Featured story. Uh, she throws it back for a... No, okay. We're done. Too many times. <laughs> <laughs> okay.